All right, everyone. I was thinking about going over this last week, but I'm kind of glad we didn't. Um, I know I'm a little late. We actually have exclusive audio from Uga X's Q's Celebration of Life. Check it out. <clears throat> uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we are here on a sad occasion. Uh, I'm Charles Seiler, Uga's handler and breeder. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Uga Ten. Q. Q, you will go down in history as the University of Georgia's winningest bulldog. And while your name is pronounced Q, Q's name is spelled like the Spanish word a K, meaning what? But what we should be saying today is poor K. Why? You may, be, you may be able to dodge bulls on the ground, but that big bull in the sky is undefeated. And a big fat fuck you to PETA. Rest in peace, Q. You will be missed. Number 87 is dedicated to our doggy friend, Ugga 10, or Q. Most decorated Georgia Bulldog in program history. Live from Delaware, it's Hoagies and Pierogies! With your hosts, Ian DiCarlo. We're getting a little double down. Chocolate rain. And RJ Hammond. I just want some more hot tea in my life. Let's just say he was a good lover. Oh God, he's doing characters now. He must have had a traumatic brain injury from the fall. <laughs> People, I have to make this a little bit more entertaining week to week. I got to pick it up. I got to definitely got to pick it up on my end. So, you know, let me let me test the waters a bit. Uh, see what uh, people of the people of TikTok and Instagram have to say about it. If it's a complete bomb, I, I will more than make up with it for my takes on uh, the MLB Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, Bilicek might be doing his walk of shame every day of the year and of course we have to go over the AFC and NFC championship games uh then I'll end it with my Super Bowl prediction but uh this is going to be a salty episode so let's get into it let's see how this goes Alyssa Milano on Twitter asked everyone for asked for donations for her son's little league team and what is the first thing I see when I click on her Twitter profile a pro-Israeli tweet Girl, if you're going to dispel those Jewish stereotypes, you better start spending money to send them to Cooperstown, Pennsylvania, which you can do for the next decade with little to no loss from it. That's insane. Ask your husband's clientele to uh, donate. He's like the head of a Hollywood sports agency. So, like, what what are we doing? But... (laughs) It cannot be that expensive to go to Cooperstown. There's no way. <laughs> How many kids are on a little league team? Twenty. I don't. I don't even. I have no idea. You can easily spend that much, and the donation was asking for like ten thousand dollars max. Easily, you can cover that. Don't bullshit me. Well, speaking of Cooperstown. Last week, we had our new Hall of, Hall of Fame inductees, and it, it didn't start till 6.30, so I didn't want to wait to go over that. I wanted to get the recording done on Tuesday. I record every single Tuesday night now. I, I think that's a good good thing for me just to stay in rhythm. I'm not going to switch it to Monday. I'm not going to switch it to Wednesday. I'm not going to... None of that. I'm releasing the episode on Thursday, not to get overshadowed by New Heights on Wednesday. <laughs> Here's what I think of the new Hall of Fame inductees. Adrian Beltre, shoo-in first-timer, got 95.1% of the vote, 3,166 hits, 636 doubles, 477 home runs, five gold gloves at third base, four silver sluggers, and yet didn't make his first All-Star game until his 13th season. Did not make his uh, until his 13th season when he was with the Red Sox. He was 31 years old. And that was the year, it looks like he bet on himself because it was a one-year contract with the Red Sox just to say, hey, you better start paying attention to me. 
And uh, the Rangers are glad that he did because he was a lifetime Ranger from then on out. Uh, He started his career when he was, I believe, 19. 19 with the Dodgers. Played 21 MLB seasons. He's easily one of the funniest players. If you haven't seen any of uh, Adrian Beltre's antics, I would highly recommend looking that up, them up. People, he got pissed when people would touch his head. <laughs> like he would fake, like flip out. But it was, it was hilarious. When you're that excellent, like those cumulative stats will get you there every time. Over three thousand hits, over four hundred fifty home runs, five Gold Gloves at third base. The dual threat of having that uh, power header. And a phenomenal defender at third base? Can't go wrong. This was an easy, easy option for the voters. 95% is pretty damn... I didn't even think he would get that high. But 100%. Well liked by the media, so that's totally understandable. All right, next up, it surprises me that Maurer made the Hall of Fame on his first ballot. For someone with only 2,100 hits and 143 home runs... You want to talk about cumulative? That's not even close to as much cumulative stats as you need. Yeah, he was a catcher. He's actually the only the third ever catcher to make it in on his first ballot. Uh, Bench and uh, Yvonne Yvonne Rodriguez, Pudge, made it in on their first attempts as well. Um, Yogi Berra wasn't even elected to the Hall of Fame on his first try. That was some media bullshit, though. I guess the Veterans Committee started putting people in behind, you know, the voters' backs. So they were like, enough of that. (laughs) And the Veterans Committee choice got moved down like five years or something. I'm not totally sure what the rule on that is. I I really am shocked he made it in. Apparently the peak stats are good enough for Maurer. Uh, The only thing that this, like, made me think of was... Does McCutcheon have a shot? He's a Pittsburgh guy through and through. Yeah, he played some seasons elsewhere, but 200 home runs in a Pirates uniform. He's going to have 300 home runs overall this season. I I really don't think so. Uh, I think I said last offseason that Larry Doby was the most similar player to him, and Larry Doby is only in the Hall of Fame because he was the first black player in the AL. So that's a little bit different of a distinction there. Uh, Larry Doby was a groundbreaker for the whole of the AL. And basically that covered the rest of the MLB at the time. And uh, McCutcheon getting the Pirates to the playoffs pales in comparison. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Maurer was from Minnesota. So it, it makes even more sense for him. I hate to w- to take away the shine from Maurer in this situation because he had those crazy peak stats. Um, didn't write him down. I actually do have his season up here, so let's go here and do that. I actually don't. He was the only one that I didn't have looked up. So, all right, that's great. Maurer would have gotten in, gotten in eventually. But, like, uh, 2,100 hits, 143 home runs. That's glaring. That is on the extreme low end of both in the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure if anyone hasn't cleared 2,000 hits that's in just for playing. I, like, oh, Larry Doby was another one that was selected by the Veterans Committee. He didn't even make it through traditional voting. So would Maurer have made it if the Veterans Committee got to have a choice? I would say yes. And he's also well-liked by the media, like Beltre. Not as much as Beltre, but definitely... A baseball kid, but I he just it's not enough. It's not enough for me. Would he have gotten in in eventually? Yes, but maybe should have made him wait a little longer. And speaking of a long wait, the final player to make it in this year is Todd Helton. He was the starting quarterback at Tennessee before Peyton Manning. Mind fucking blown. Uh, everything, everyone thinks he's good because of playing at Coors, but he was actually better on the road than at Coors, which is extremely unique 
Uh, my standard for hitters being in the Hall of Fame is 300, 400, 500 uh, batting average on base percentage and slugging percentage. And Helton marks all those off as a first baseman. You re- rarely get the triple threat of contact on base power with the first baseman. He had an oh, I forgot to write this down too. He had a 349 ISO in a single season, which is one of the highest that I've that I have ever seen. Barry Bonds cleared that that mark in 2001 and beyond. McGuire hit above that mark for a couple of seasons, but even Sammy Sosa only had one season where he cleared a 349 ISO, and that was in 2001, the same season as Helton. All steroid guys, big steroid guys. So. That ISO alone is saying a lot for someone that was never involved, name never got mentioned in any of those PED scandals. Why that's impressive is because it takes away, it's basically your slugging percentage minus your batting average. So his batting average that year when he had a 349 ISO was 336. So to have a 349 ISO... He had a 685 slugging percentage. His slugging was 685. That's insane. And he did a lot of that damage, like I said, away from cores. Of course, he, you know, hammered home runs at cores. But that's uh, amazing. Incredible. Uh, 369 home runs for his career. Only had 2,519 hits, which also is kind of why maybe he was being held out a little bit. Only had... He had a 316 average, 414 average, 539 average, batting average on base percentage slugging, which is it's just incredible. OPS plus of 133. Highly deserved to get in. But there is one more. And this is a travesty. I cannot believe that Billy Wagner did not make the Hall of Fame on this go-around. He 100% deserves it. It's one of the best lefties, lefty relievers, best lefties, period, best lefty reliever, though, to ever play the game. Sixth overall in saves at 424 saves. 422 saves, my bad. Seven-time All-Star, and he's a natural right-hander. He says he couldn't even use a fork with his left hand to, to this day without poking his eye out. Wagner broke his arm twice before the age of seven and decided to throw with his left hand just to be able to keep playing with his friends growing up. Already an incredible story. He is still currently the record holder for most Ks per nine in one college season at 19.1, which is absurd. Skeens didn't do that last year. Uh, the Astros picked him number one overall in the 93 draft, and he debuted in 95. Um, after retiring in 2010, he said that he could, uh, that he had a little bit more in him and could have probably pitched a couple more years. So he could have reached 500 saves. Billy Wagner could be the only 500 save lefty. He's just chose not to. He was like, yeah, I'm done. I want to hang out with my kids more. 400 saves is no joke, however. Uh, Craig Kimbrell and Kenley Jansen hit 400 this year, and no one will hit that mark for a very, very long time. I'd like to wager at least 15 to 20 years. I No one will even sniff it. Chapman might get close, but he's not even the closer on the Pirates right now. So he's how many saves is he going to get this year? Maybe 10? Maybe. Uh, Emmanuel Class, 25. Edwin Diaz or Josh Hader, both 29, would be the three most likely to do it. Uh, but I, I don't think they'll get there. Class is at 111. Hader is at 165. And Diaz is at 205 with horrible injury luck. So even if their ages help them, they are facing an uphill battle with how relievers are used in today's game. Um. John Franco is the only lefty with more saves than Wagner at 424. 1,245 and two-thirds innings pitched to 903 innings pitched for Wagner. He was 1.2% away 
from making the Hall of Fame. You got to clear 75%. He was at 73.8. Uh, blank ballots should just mean an automatic disqualification for the next year or for the next five years or forever. I don't know what these old be- I, Who cares? Who cares how they treat the media? I don't give a shit. What did they do on the field? Separate how they are in the media from what they are in the field. Period. Old voters need to die so this bullshit stops happening. So new people can get a chance to vote. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely... Re- I hate the way that MLB does their fucking Hall of Fame voting. It is crazy. It's so fucking stupid. Just... Let Billy Wagner, the best left-handed reliever of all time in. If he's not getting in, we're never going to see another reliever ever, ever make it into the Hall of Fame. If Billy Wagner does not get in, there will not be a single reliever elected into the Hall of Fame in the lifetime of the MLB. (sighs) Well, we're on the right path, all right. Jesus Christ. (laughs) <laughs> All right, let's move on to the NFL. The coaching carousel continues. <sighs> I was right about this one. Harbaugh is a charger. Let's go. Uh, I got. I saw it right after I got done recording that it would be likely that he would be the coach. Then the next day, he obviously signed with them. Um, We know that Harbaugh likes his Southern California teams. I, I He was in... San Francisco before. I mean, this was the easy choice for him. So that means uh, my Sharona is the new head coach in Michigan. Let's go. I love to see this man sloppy cry and cuss on national television. (laughs) This one was kind of a head scratcher. The Panthers are hiring Bucks OC Dave Canales for their head coaching vacancy. Um, What an odd choice for a team that wants to get better on offense. But yet this coordinator went four and seven to start the year. And then went five and one over their next games. The Packers were the only playoff team that they beat. And they beat the Panthers twice. So good on him for parlaying that into a head coaching job. But like, how well do you think things are going to go in Carolina next year? Seriously. Well, <laughs> Bryce Young was virtually no better than Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones last year. So what. You're the the max they're gonna be is nine and eight and sneak into the playoffs because the rest of the NFC South sucks. That blows. Damn, what what an odd, odd choice from the Panthers. Yeah, I wonder if their owner is still drunk to this point because they, something has to be going on there. What the hell? And unfortunately, the first part of that Harbaugh to the Chargers was me talking up Bill to the old Falcons there. <sighs> No Belichick to the Falcons. Raheem Morris is their head coach. And actually, from what I've seen on Twitter, he seems to be a hell of a guy and a hell of a coach. If I mean, he got so much praise. This was, I guess, a great hire for them. The Belichick replacing Pete Carroll theory just got stronger because there were reports this past week uh, of the commanders being heavily in on Ben Johnson, who just said he's staying, actually. So scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> who knows where they're going to go next. And then we're obviously going to have to wait until the 49ers and the Chiefs uh, are done in the Super Bowl. We'll see if any of the 49ers coordinators get poached from them. But yeah, there have been zero rumors out of Seattle, so I have no idea who's going to go there. Scratch that. Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator of the Ravens, is going to be the head coach of the Seahawks. Saw that right as I was editing. Thank God. This was hilarious. The Steelers went from Matt Canada to Arthur Smith. That's all I have to say about that. (sighs) Let's get those gears grinding up again because, my God. (sighs) We got to go over these championship games. I'm going to say it right off the bat. The Ravens shit the bed and the Lions shit the bed. That's really all I want to say about that. I don't even want to go over these games because the Ravens blew ass. Why would you stop running the ball? Lamar was in the pocket for six seconds every fucking play because he wanted his receivers to get open and just chuck it down the field for no reason. For zero reason. 
And man, uh, it, at first it was reminding me of the game from last week where the Bills were looking good, but the Chiefs were hanging in there. I thought the Chiefs were looking pretty damn good, but the Ravens were still hanging around. They definitely gave them that opportunity to come back after it was 14-7 to that it'll most likely come down to a stop rather than a score. My God, that second half fucking sucked. Also, Kyle Hamilton was playing out of his damn mind in this game. Every other play, his name was being called for tackles. He was flying all over the field. What a great pick for them. Also in the game, uh, Travis Kelsey passed Jerry Rice for the most receptions in the postseason ever with 152 and counting. I don't know if he, uh, he might have had another catch after that. I didn't write it down. Oh, but, my God, um, the Ravens' defense was getting mad. They were getting really mad. Stupid penalty on Van, Van Noy for headbutting Kelsey. What the hell were you doing? And then another penalty for roughing the passer, which <laughs> just completely closed the line Mahomes' neck. I mean, it was, that was quite obvious. There is no, no favor from the refs there. <laughs> It was 17-7 to seven at halftime. My prediction for the game actually still held true at halftime, 17-7, to seven, and I said it would be 28-7, to seven, or 28-17 to 17 Ravens last week. So I was like, oh, Ravens could actually make this happen, but nope. Ravens muster three points in the second half. Three points. They were just shooting themselves in the foot. Stupid-ass play calls. The whole time. Lamar refused to run the ball. And when he did get that one run on fourth and three, he like stopped mid run to look behind him. He should, if he would have kept sprinting, he would have at least made it to the second level, got in at least another 15 to 20 yards. I don't know what he was doing there. That didn't make any sense to me. And then the Ravens did what the Chiefs did last week. Oh, fumble out of the back of the end zone, out of the side of the end zone. That was one of the biggest fails. Well, actually, before that, Zay Flowers. Who cares if he was twisting your leg? Don't stand in his face or spike the ball in his at his helmet. What do you do? You got down to the 10-yard line, 8-yard line. They were going to run it in if you didn't get that stupid fucking penalty. And what do you do the next play? Fumble it out of the end zone. And then what do you do the next in the next 20 seconds? Go out of bounds, slam your hand down on the fucking bench and cut your hand something real good, like what I had. Not the... Ugh. Act act like you've been here before. And none of them acted like they were there before. So... So fucking pitiful on the Ravens' behalf. I, I I don't know what to say. They really just abandoned everything. And you've definitely heard this from other people this week. Abandoned everything that made them good in the first place. Everything that got them there. Just said, nope, we'll fucking wing it. We'll wing it. We're just going to try to hit bombs all day. And just have the spy stare at me. We're going to have a staring contest for fucking six seconds. And then I'm going to throw the ball into triple coverage. What was that touchdown attempt? What? I, 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 clearly not open. Clearly triple coverage. Lamar, what the fuck are you doing? I don't get it. I, I, it they were also, they were wasting so much time. Just run forward. Everyone is trying to cut it to the side, juke everyone out, fake do a fake stutter step. And I, what in the hell was that? MVS caught the deep ball to ice the game. Chiefs got out of there without scoring in the second half. That was damn impressive. Um, but yeah, Ravens shit the bet on the, that one. Chiefs defense played very well, but there were just so many dumb calls and misplays by the Ravens. 
playoff Patty is making a name for himself, though. I'll give him that. If he wins this Super Bowl, I mean, we should definitely be expecting him to make it to the AFC Championship game from now on forever. Portnoy was right to call them the new Patriots because this is a dynasty. Not like last year wasn't even a dynasty because they were a dynasty last year after they won the Super Bowl. I don't know if – I know that the Kansas City fans were expecting this, but I don't know – if fans in general were expecting him to make this many Super Bowls after he signed that $500 million contract, 100% worth it, and even more. The fact that he can do something with nothing other than a Hall of Fame tight end and a pretty damn good defense and one of the best head coaches of all time. (laughs) And that's the thing. I think when Andy Reid goes, I don't think there's going to be a, well, could Andy Reid win without Mahomes? Could he, you know. Could Mahomes win without Andy Reid? And we'll see that part, I guess. But I don't mind. I really don't mind another dynasty rising. Because that just gives everyone a target. Hey, every gives everyone a goal. <sighs> yeah, congrats to the Chiefs, I guess. This one was, I don't, I don't know. I, I just felt like the Lions collapsed instead of shooting themselves in the foot. If anything, Dan Campbell shot everyone's foot. I mean, we'll get into that here. Uh, the Lions sold out their stadium for twenty bucks a ticket, which was pretty cool. I thought that was awesome, and what a way, what a way to start out the game. Williams, forty-two yard end around. They were out for blood. Whew. and I didn't realize that Aiden Hutchinson was six foot seven. No wonder he's scary, or everyone's scared of him. <laughs> So immediately after that, I they were no good. The 49ers were no good on the field goal. Still 7 0. Um the Lions defense or the Lions offense was so dynamic with Gibbs and Montgomery in that first half. When you have a backfield duo to, duo of McCaffrey and Debo, which is also good, Debo is not even a running back though. He really does not have the same skill set. <laughs> and I said <laughs> Right after the uh, Lions went up 14 nothing, I said, give me the Lions pass game coordinator right now. New England, the first half wasn't impressive enough for me to still stick with this. Go after their pass game coordinator, please. Even the 49ers pass game coordinator, I don't care. Go outside the organization. I don't want Nick Haley. I don't want, I don't want him. I've made a decision. <laughs> I even said when the Lions went up 21-7, to oh, no, this is looking bad. But they keep their opponents close the whole game. I made note of that. And then it was 24-7 at halftime. This machine heated up fast, and it fell apart pretty damn fast. Even I said it really doesn't feel like this 49ers offense is geared for a big comeback. I mean, it was 24 to 10 after their first possession in the second half. This is the point where the Lions got the ball back. And yeah, it's fourth and three in the opponent's territory at their 30 or 28. Yeah, at the 28 yard line. You have to, you have to go up three scores here. You have to, I don't care who you are, you have to go up three scores right there. That was the game. That was 100% the game. Because what happens on the next drive? Ayuk goes and has a circus touchdown catch that reignites the whole stadium. And now you know the Lions are fucked. And then Gibbs fumbled the ball giving it right back to the 49ers. Tied the game up at 24. That was a momentum swing and a fucking half. Going from stopping them on fourth down to Ayuk's crazy catch to Gibbs fumbling the ball then to McCafferty's touchdown. Consecutive drives. I 
I I could not believe it. I I could not believe what I was watching. I think this one made even less sense. The 49ers took their first lead of the game to go up 27-24. They then go for it again on fourth and fourth and 2, I think it was. Instead of taking the field goal to tie it up. 7 minutes and 32 seconds left. Instead of going for the tie, you go for it all. Your defense has been ass in the second half. So why even take that chance? It doesn't it, that didn't make sense to me. This one was on Dan Campbell. 27 unanswered points. Their next touchdown came way too late with 56 seconds left to make it 31-34. I am just baffled by the Ravens' decisions and the Lions' decisions this weekend. They will learn from this. But like Dan Campbell said, 100% not guaranteed to be here next year. Likely not going to be here next year. It's hard to go back and repeat. This was a absolutely gut-wrenching loss from the Lions. I think that they will do well next year. Like I said, Ben Johnson's staying. We'll see if anyone else leaves. Aaron Glenn maybe has an opportunity to go to the commander's so we'll see. I mean, it's just, it, it is really never a guarantee to make it back. And they might have blown their only shot at doing it. That's that's all I'll say. I mean, assuming the Lions, uh, assuming the game would have played out the same way, Lions would have been up 37-34 if they took those two field goals. But obviously, obviously it wouldn't have. Now I really don't give a shit about the Super Bowl, to be honest. <laughs> I, 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 I really, I really don't care. Uh, this was the most boring matchup possible. Everyone lost. Too much red. Uh, I'm gonna say the Chiefs win because money beats all, and Taylor Swift's gonna be there, flying all the way from fucking Tokyo the day before. You know what? <laughs> Fuck the Chiefs and 49ers. This season blew ass. <laughs> if it ever is revealed that is that it's scripted, I'm going to explode. I will spontaneously combust. It will not be good. <laughs> you know, I, I hope the 49ers go up 28 to three and fucking lose. Uh, who cares? Who cares anymore? But for real, I'm going to go with the 49ers. I mean, they can muster the offense. Chiefs defense has been playing out of their minds, uh, but I don't think the 49ers are going to be stupid. Kyle Shanahan wants his fucking Super Bowl. God. Uh, well, thought this one was going to be a little bit longer, but hey, we'll save some stuff for next week. Actually, it was nice to be able to pick and choose topics or else we would have been talking about Mac Jones looking outside the organization again for help because he can't fucking figure it out. So, yeah, you, we avoided that with all the topics this week. So maybe next week I'll save that since there's no games other than the Pro Bowl games, which I am looking forward to this year again. Uh, last year I did like it. So we will see. Alrighty, everybody. But I think that's it. I will see you guys next week. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on TikTok and Instagram. Follow us along on Spotify and Apple, etc. We're on everything. And I believe that's it, guys. Alrighty. Adios. I want to watch, 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 watch.